Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFAF in Europe. This is tra training tape number three of six dealing with block below the waist. Today we're looking at the crackback block. So we'll look at some O-linemen, we'll look at some receivers, and we'll look at uh, when can they crack and when can they not crack. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look at what the MOFO and the rulebook have to say. In the rulebook, we start with 2-3-2 two, two by defining block below the waist. A block below the waist is a block in which the force of the initial contact is below the waist of an opponent who has one or both feet on the ground. When in question, the contact is below the waist. B, a blocker who makes contact above the waist and then slides below the waist has not blocked below the waist. If the blocker first contacts the opponent's player's hands at the waist or above, it is a legal above the waist block. For this specific training tape, the relevant rule is 916A exception 2, which states players outside the tackle box at the snap or any time after the snap or who are in motion at the snap may not block below the waist towards the original position of the ball at the snap. In the MOFO, we start with section 3.3 contact fouls. 4 deals with blocking below the waist and B says, for the first 3 seconds after the snap, when in question, the ball has not left the tackle box. Thereafter, when in question, the ball has left the tackle box. And E goes on to say, remember that it is the direction related to the opponent's area of concentration, not the point of contact, that determines whether a block below the waist is directed from the front or not. And finally, uh, when in doubt principles, 45 says a block below the waist occurred before, not after, the ball left the tackle box. And that was the book. Now let's have a look at some game film. We're looking at the outside receiver at the top of the screen and, and crackback blocks are typically done by receivers so we'll look primarily at receiving blocks and here the receiver he goes low and he goes towards the well the middle of the field which is technically called the original position of the ball uh, so here's a clear example uh, of a receiver that goes towards the middle of the field and and when he goes low like this uh, this is a clear-cut foul and well done by this field judge to call it here we're also looking at the receiver at the top of the screen and again you'll see a similar situation where he is he goes low and he goes towards the original position of the ball ie towards the middle of the field. Now, in this situation, he doesn't make as much contact as in the previous play, uh, but you know, for, for safety foul, this is still enough for a flag, so this should be called as a personal foul block below the waist. In this example, we're looking at a receiver from the from the left. He's going to block uh, the outside linebacker B31. So if we follow 31, uh, we'll see the block coming from the outside. And this is actually a legal block. You'll notice that the block is it's low, but it's from the front, and it's it's pretty much north south. You'll even see that after the block, the receiver is is facing towards his sideline which is a good indicator that it was not a crack back so here we have a uh, compared to the previous two we have a legal low block by this receiver we're looking at the receiver at the top of the screen and he is going to come towards the middle of the screen he is going to go low but no contact means no foul uh, 
we certainly could have a, a talk to to this guy if we can speak uh, Mexican. Uh, but again, if there is no contact, there is no foul, even though this most likely would have been a foul for a crackback had he made contact. Here's another example of where the, the receiver really tries to do something illegal, but he gets uh, he gets bailed out. We're looking at the receiver on the left side of the screen, and he's going to come in and and really try to do a crack back. He's going towards the original position of the ball. He's going low, but as you'll see, uh, number 20 actually initiates contact with his hands, making the contact above the waist, making this a legal block, and, and the receiver really never manages to make much of an impact. So because B20 puts out his hands and wards off the block, this ends up being a legal block, even though it has all the, the telltale signs of a potential crack back from the receiver coming in from the side towards the original position of the ball and he's going low but uh, B20 bails him out so again this is a legal block. Crackbacks are typically by the receivers but here every once in a while we get a lineman and here we're looking at the guard closest to the camera he's going to pull to this side of the field and he's going to come back and go low towards the original position of the ball you'll notice how when he's lying there his body uh, is is pointing more towards the middle than and then towards the the outside certainly uh, but let's just uh, break this down and, and have a look at how close this actually was to being legal because if he manages to stay in the tackle box and the ball is still in the tackle box uh, this would be a, a legal block uh, also because the block happens right around the line of scrimmage so uh, ball is in position four so if, if we first let's look at the ball and the ball is still in the in the zone there is a fake handoff the quarterback still has the ball now it's given to the running back who's still in the tackle box here comes the block and the runner is still in the tackle box he's right around position one so the ball is still in the tackle box at least uh, so that's squared away now let's have a look at the player um, he comes around here and it does appear right here that he does leave the tackle box now if he had been able to stay within the tackle box this would have been a legal crackback block but since he just leaves the the tackle box now he can no longer uh, crack back making this an illegal block but it was very very close and uh, and 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 it's just an illustration that that you know once in a while we get the uh, the lineman coming out uh, and then going back towards the grain for for a crackback block but typically these are are done by receivers so that was the training tape i hope you found something you can use on the field